Holy Spirit. Happy Amen. feast day, Sprasnikov. Sprasnikov. Yeah. St. Gregory Palamas, in his first homily on this feast, he's, of his most famous homilies, probably the second one on this feast is the most well known, but they both are profound. <coughs> Excuse me once again, forgive my voice, this illness still prevails. Um, he says, oh, asking the question at the beginning, if a tree, if a good tree bears good fruit, brings forth good fruit, and a tree is known by its fruit, what tree or what fruit, what could be any greater or more impassable than the mother of God who gave birth to goodness itself, which no fruit is greater than, no virtue we can bring forth, nothing the angels can do, nothing we can do, is any possibly can touch what the mother of God did, bearing God within herself. For she is that tree which bore the greatest of fruits, that fruit which brings us to salvation. And this is right and just because the devil, the noetic serpent from the ages, tried to bring us to him by deceit, by guile, by cunning, by convincing us that we too could be God if we would partake of that forbidden fruit, not the good fruit. And the Lord approaches us in a different way. He comes as well to us. He tried, tried to save Adam by mercy, by justice, by honesty, without gunning, without, without cunning, without guile, without deceit. And he enters into a virgin because the only way that fallen Adam could be raised up was by that flesh to be without sin again. And no man could do that. So God took flesh upon himself. And to take flesh upon himself, he needed a fit vessel to bear him, to give him flesh. And he chose the most pure virgin mother, Mary, who would enter into as the prophets have proclaimed from the ages. It was an amazing thing to ponder. We could ponder it for hours. But she who is the holy of holies, holier than the holies, as the Akathis says in the, the last echos, because she bore, she is indeed the divine tabernacle, she bears God within herself, enters into the holy of holies of the temple. He's heard the Kentucky, and she brings grace in the spirit into the holies, which obviously already had a fair amount of grace. It brought, brought even greater grace into the Holy of Holies. And because she maintains such great purity, she enters into the Holy of Holies of heaven itself. It's an amazing thought. The Holy of Holies enters, enters into the Holy of Holies, that she might enter into the holiest of holies by God, the throne of God. <coughs> oh, it's pain. It's amazing. But yet, look at her life. Elder Ephraim in Illuminating Honor says that in giving birth to the Son of God did not corrupt her virginity. Sin did not corrupt her soul. And death did not corrupt her body. None of us can say that. There are saints whose bodies are incorrupt, and we and bear witness to that today, that her body was so pure and so holy that she was taken up, as we know, in the Feast of her Dormition on that third day, as Thomas bore witness to, to be by the throne of God himself. And she loves those who love her son. Gregory Palamas in his second homily, the famous one, which he worked on for years in different renditions of it, compares the entire life of the Virgin to the Orthodox method of healing, which is the method of healing for the Orthodox, Hezekiah, entering into silence of the heart, controlling the thoughts, and enthroning Christ within our hearts. It's what the Mother of God did as a small child running up the steps to Zechariah from her parents, an amazing thing. They offer her a profound thing of humility in itself, of love of God. She runs up the steps to Zechariah and takes her and lets her live in the Holy of Holies, and the priest can only enter in once a year. Once a year. And she lives there. 
let's say, nine years or very cows. But for years she stays, stays there in the presence of God. Doesn't occupy herself with worldly cares, doesn't occupy herself with distractions, but occupies herself only with Christ, only with God, the coming Christ. When she's fed by an angel, you see the icon, the angel continues to feed her. There are saints who were fed that way too. Her concern was only for the things of God and she was fed. It goes back to the sermon of yesterday and the, the rich fool. If we put our concerns on God, he will take care of us and not worry so much about the things of this world. She was taken care of, as many of the saints were as well. And St. Simeon the New Theologian says, as he is wont to say very profound and sometimes shocking things, we are all called to be theotoki, theotokos, plural theotokos. Not that we're, any of us are going to bear God in the way she did. None of us are that holy. None of us are called to do that. It's not our calling, it's her calling. We are to bear God within our hearts. We are to bear Christ at all times within our hearts. And he does not choose, it is not right for him to choose as some in the world want to tell you of just any vessel, just any teen mother as the world wants to try to tell you. He chose the holiest of people to enter into. One who chose not to sin. Subject to the laws of decay because of the flesh, but overcoming that because of her purity and her free will to always follow Christ, to follow God in all things. That is not impossible for us. Seems like it, but it is not impossible. We too can follow Christ in all things, in all times, in all places, and become Theotokhi. Through her holy prayers we can do these things, and by following her example of one who stood at the feet of Christ, and followed him in all things. And even when she was working as Martha, gave all glory to God, and everything was for Christ. Everything was prayer. And she desires our salvation as well. I encourage you, if you have not developed that prayer life around her yet, to begin to read the Akathis, maybe at least once a week to the Mother of God. That's not much. I know Greek Christians who read it at least once a day, maybe more. It doesn't take that long. You memorize it very quickly, actually. And to call upon her in all things. I remember Joseph the Hezekast, who could not approach an icon, the Mother of God, without breaking into tears. So many of the saints she has appeared to in their times of trial and encouraged. And she is there for us. She is our mother. She is the common mother of all of us. We all come from the same womb, from the baptismal font. Each and every one of us are brothers and sisters because of that. But she is the mother, really, of us all. And she desires more than any earthly mother we have had our salvation, our purification, indeed our deification. By following her example, by entering into the Holy of Holies ourselves in prayer and purifying our hearts, we can have Christ reigning there as she did and stand with her at the right hand of God. Most holy Theotokos save us.